Live from Wits End, this is the Rail Trains of Thought. Hey, Nick, over here. Oh, okay. I they sent me down. Yeah, over I, here it was comfy. Well, but. They, there, I know there's a lot of kids around. With the, yeah, but I'm a little disoriented. I don't like this many people around when I land. Wait, what? <laughs> Teleport? I don't know. Apparate? I don't. Not really sure what we do. But. Uh, oh, how we get to these places? Yeah, we're just there. Yeah, I, I've, I've just been here hanging out for a while. This is. I'll tell you what. This is a childhood dream come true for me. I always wanted to visit this place. Yeah, I've not. I've only been here a few times in audio, and first time here in real life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they even have uh, fireworks going in the meantime. It's such a big occasion for our 90th episode. Next. 90 episodes of derailed trains of thought. Thankfully, this is probably close enough to our anniversary date. We'll just go ahead and say happy eighth anniversary. Woohoo! <laughs> We've been going since 2010. You know, back in like episode 20, we were like, are we going to come up with enough topic ideas? Yeah. 70 episodes later. <laughs> well, it helps that we limited it to once a month. I still think the fact that we were trying to do it bi-weekly for a while is insane. Yeah. But some people do it, but for us, this monthly format works the best. Yeah. Um, but so you have to show me around here, Tim. Yes, it should. You, you know, you should really try the uh, Wadfam Chocksod. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, see up there on the menu. Yeah, I think okay. I think they were trying to spell world famous chocolate soda, but they ran out of letters. Oh, okay. Oh, I see it now. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, nice. but it's a little noisy here with all the kids. We should probably make our way back. Uh, I think they have a nice radio booth there. That'd be great. I don't like to hunch in like cold corners like we do sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, we're in an ice cream shop right now, but yeah, like I said, a little noisy, a little messy. Look out for oh, watch that whipped cream. Um, Anyway, so let's we'll head back this way through the hallway. Look to your right there. That's the Bible room. You're gonna, oh. you'll, you'll want to check that out sometime. Yeah, I, I would like to. That'd Especially like the, the Imagination Station, like your own holodeck, essentially. Oh, I, I will take that. Okay, yeah. When we're almost done with the podcast, let's just press pause before we finish so we can hang out here for a bit. Yeah, I, I think that'd be... A, oh, yeah, that's right, because I don't know. Sometimes the podcast kind of whisk, whisks yeah. us away somewhere. Yeah. Okay, well, anyway. Um, okay, here it is. Let me open the door. Um, all right. See now, it's nice and quiet in here. This is this is a much better place. This is like made for us. I know. We we never get to actually work in a actual radio booth. No, no. We've been in some strange places. Yeah. <laughs> somehow the, booth. Usually, somehow the podcast insulates us from the chaos going on around us. Yeah, which is which is pleasant. Yes, and helps for recording quality, uh, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, now that we're all situated, uh, let's get down to business. Let's do story school. So for Story School today, in honor of our 90th episode, we thought it'd be nice to do something very fitting for the podcast format, and that is audio in storytelling. Audio, different than our podcast on music a while ago. A while ago, yes. We're talking sound effects, and well, not just sound effects, but the, kind of the whole overall... Soundscape. Soundscape in a story. Okay. Which doesn't happen much in books, but... Not as much. <laughs> I mean, you've got your onomatopoeias, you've got your... Um, I mean, you hear the imitation... The crickets chirped as the frogs croaked and the raccoons fought little Jack Jack or whatever. <laughs> um, the the audio version the of, audio. <laughs> of Incredibles 2. <laughs> yes. Or in comic books, I guess you've got the big like thwap, bam, pow. And weirder words than that, but yeah. <laughs> they, they, they <laughs> cuckoo, goo, crack, cuckoo, whoosh. <laughs> Sometimes they'll, they'll come up with their own onomatopoeias. Yeah. Well, then, and I guess there was a little bit of uh, Stan Lee loved that kind of verbiage anyway. I think he, yeah. he loved his alliteration, even though it's well, it's like a literary sort of sound. sound. I guess true. I guess poetry or literary writing has a sort of cadence, but mm -hmm. we're not really going to talk much about that today. Yeah. We get yeah. into deep weeds with that. Right. Most of the time when we when we encounter sound and storytellings, we're either in uh, one of two mediums. One, the, a visual medium, which unless you're watching silent movies has sound as a very important part of it, the part that everyone kind of forgets about. You just absorb it, and then later on, 
Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, the audio only format, which podcasting like this. Yes. Um, or radio shows, both old and new. Yep. So those are kind of the two areas. But let's let's focus on the one first that people are probably most familiar with, uh, sound and movies or TV and videos, et cetera. Yes. So it's one of those things I make fun of sometimes in movies or whatever. You know, people punch people. It makes quite a sound. <laughs> it does. Make, <laughs> like uh, s- slamming a big chunk of meat against a table or something. Don't know, isn't it them punching like a, originally like lettuce and radio dramas or something I, like that? I think so. Sometimes I think they actually might have even used meats, I want to okay. I want to say. But yeah, like I remember like Walker, Texas Ranger. You know, you get these big whack, whack. <laughs> and if someone was actually getting hit that sounded that hard, you know, they'd, <laughs> they'd be in instantly in concussion but see the sound makes us feel the intensity of the action mm-hmm. if we got just the sounds we in real life it'd be kind of boring honestly yeah like guns would not sound nearly as cool if they sound real so you got to have that big click click clack and yep. swords have to have a big <laughs> ring, ring as they come out well and you know space battles oh yeah a lot of times you wouldn't have sound in space there's no air but it wouldn't be cool. No, it's I mean, and two thousand one does that sort of. Uh, yeah, but that's why no one watches it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I sure there's some film buffs that. that would have yeah, disagreed with Yeah, I just, I just there, made but... some people mad. <laughs> no, but you want space battles with loud bangs, even if it's not realistic. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the uh, that trailer for the first Alien movie? They they have which, oh in space no one can hear you scream yeah which is the the tagline at the very end but the lead up to that tagline is actually very loud and very chaotic and like very like first like I think it's got like machinery clacks and I don't know if there's like a timer in that one I, for, I can forget but definitely kind of a cadence and then screams and there's I think there's even a cat screaming in in that one which is even somehow scarier than the woman screaming weird yeah I don't know if I know that I don't really know I've seen that for you. Uh, I'll have to show you sometime. It's a very memorable, appropriate for Alien yeah. kind of st- yeah. trailer. And a lot of these, uh, I was joking with Tim before we started, that uh, that sound is like the smell of the visual medium, <laughs> which is smell, they will say, you know, will impact deeply in your memory, mm-hmm. mnemonically. And, you know, you smell something like, oh, it's grandma's house whenever, or you smell some ratatouille, like, oh, I'm back in my childhood. And I think the sound, there's a lot of them we don't even know that we know. Mm. The amount of Star Wars that's simply sound. Yes. A big part of the identity of Star Wars is in the sound, whether it's R2-D2's beeps or the sound of blasters, of or different kinds light, of blasters. Yeah, lightsabers. I was showing my kids recently um, Phantom Menace. The amount of different sounds in the pod racers, mm. it's, a, it's, it's wonderful <laughs> just to listen to them. Uh-huh. So obviously George Lucas... Enjoy. He thinks sounds very important. Darth Vader. Darth Vader. Slight soundtrack. I've been listening to this podcast called Twenty Thousand Hertz. Slight soundtrack or slight sidetrack. Either way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not sure which one you said now. Uh, yeah, I don't remember, but I say sidetrack, okay. uh, hijack. Um, <laughs> but anyways, that George Lucas is apparently quoted as saying something like, "Sounds like half the movie." And he, before Return of Jedi, he basically created THX to try to get all these theaters. To have good enough sound systems so that people could hear Return of Jedi like he wanted it to be heard. Hmm. Anyways, just shows you that Star Wars, for Star Wars it was a very big deal. And then there's all kinds of things that you can't imagine Doctor Who without that. The <laughs> <laughs> yes, sound. A, a very distinctive. And yeah. they've even referenced it on the show sometimes. It's like, oh, it's because he doesn't use the parking brake. <laughs> exactly. And then he's like, I like that sound. <laughs> But yes, very so, and I know that's one reason why Wally mm-hmm. they got, actually got the sound designer from Star Wars to do that because Ben Burt, Ben Burt, because the guy knows how to do robot noises. <laughs> yes, he does, <laughs> and give them a personality, which it's so much so easy to forget that those are all like basically synthesized kind of sounds. A lot of them, although I know, I know like lightsabers, like they use some, original lightsaber sound to use like the sound of an old projector motor okay. or something. I feel like. It, I said, or I seem like I heard that the Darth Death Star blowing up was like some bad, like some faulty air conditioner, and they did something with the sound, or like <laughs> I could be wrong. Random memory. Yeah, it, when you look into like how they create various sound, it's it's crazy the kind of things they come up with. A sound engineer is an amazing thing. Yes, so I I couldn't do that job, but the fact that they can they put a lot of effort in so that you don't even notice mm-hmm. how much effort's there. Yes. Now 
I've not created my own sound effects very very much. I have done sound editing. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, speaking of our eighth anniversary, way back in the early parts of this yeah. uh, podcast, you heard me talk about a piece of cake. My entire spring semester, I was doing a class. I was actually the only one at the time, I think, who, who needed this class for their particular uh, path. So it was an elective, basically, of sound editing. And I had edited the picture for a piece of cake, the big student film for one of the big student films, one that wasn't just done by for a class, but was like sponsored by the, the department, basically. Yeah. And so I'd done the video edit and then I wound up, OK, I guess the spring we're going to do the sound edit, too, which was kind of appropriate because I had also been the sound mixer on the set. So at this point, I knew the movie very well, <laughs> but it was an amazingly long process. It just kind of made me realize how much you can tweak every little sound that the microphone will pick up. Because mm -hmm. usually when I would had edited student films before, it was the sound was always kind of the last. OK, we'll hurry up and make sure this is as clean. It is always kind of the last thing you paid much attention to. Yeah. Working on the same moot seven to 16 minutes movie over the course of a semester really opened my <laughs> eyes to just how much you can fine tune. Like anytime there was like a squeak on the floor or a rustle from a crew person or something, any, any like weird little thing that wasn't meant to be part of the story, mm -hmm. you could take out if yeah. you, and one of the, the keys that you do for this at a movie set is that at the very end of the shoot, you record what is called ambient noise. Okay. Yeah. Where you basically just record the sound of the room. And you have to have all the crew people in there at the same time doing this, staying silent, because the ambient sound can change depending on how many people you have in the room. Okay. The whole acoustics. So at the very end of the shoot, people are waiting on me for like two to five minutes because I, I did various settings as I know I had tweaked a couple of times. I wanted to make sure I had everything covered. It's a very long two to five minutes when like everyone's just waiting quiet and you're just like, because you need lots of the ambient sound, not only to try to match different parts of the shoot but you don't know how how much of a chunk of it you'll need at times so i guess part of the sound in visual is stuff that they've taken out that is a not big part of it not just the stuff they've put in mm -hmm. and we'll never know the stuff they took out right but you know they'll add in rustles or wind or you know the walking through the grass is heightened or yeah you come to expect that all the visuals are there in a movie for a purpose but the soundscape is usually just as important i mean that's why sound mixing and has all these oscars that no one pays attention to but the people <laughs> in the industry understand this is a big deal I had a statistic on that that podcast, Twenty Thousand Hertz. They were doing the history of the the THX sound, but they said I don't know how how industry wise it is, but that sound gets about one sixteenth of the budget that the visuals get in mm -hmm. movies. But it's a giant part of you know everything. You know it it, it creates the the entire atmosphere in many ways. Oh, and not I mean the visual do does as well, but it adds mm -hmm. a lot. And people will notice it now. It like if if something's not quite right in the sound mix. Like a lot of people said that about some of the, the recent Kingdom Hearts 3 trailers because you could tell they had done their voices recently, but the sound, like the sound effects, a lot of them weren't there. And it felt kind of like you had music and you had voices in it. Some of it felt kind of dead when Kingdom Hearts, you're used to like, you know, kill a thing and you get all these like whooshes and sparkly effects yeah. and all these various, and just like in real life, you know, these, these, uh, crazy sound mixes that you come to expect from a video game and without it it just sounded off yeah <laughs> so sound can be a, vi a big part of any visual thing like we've been talking about so yeah because visuals just think hey it's going to be what i see but we're used to seeing and hearing simultaneously you know go to fireworks and suddenly wait the sound in this visuals are out of sync yeah <laughs> oh man that, that can always be fun <laughs> keeping things in sync i mean that's where the whole clipboard thing or well i mean but in real life you know it, like my kids we were watching the fireworks and you know you see the vi the light because it travels faster than sound oh yeah. and then the boom comes after and it's just kind of weird mm -hmm. i mean it's real life it's real life but you yeah. don't see that you will never see that in a movie that's true they actually i hadn't never thought of that in the movie they probably would sync them even though in real life they wouldn't be yeah that's that's kind of funny and then when you get to pure audio yes then it is the visuals the audio is the visuals yes audio are the visuals are the, uh, <laughs> uh, will be the visuals is audio plural that i guess it depends on how it's used audio you don't say yeah. audios the audios are all <laughs> all your audios already belong to us 
But yes, audio dramas is its own unique thing. Uh, one of the amazing things about radio, though, is that it can help you create any kind of landscape on a much cheaper budget yes. than, than is possible in a movie. And it's interesting because they don't use tons of sounds. They use the right the, amount. The right amount and just the, the ones that create the most bang for your buck, I guess. Yeah. I've often thought it'd be tricky writing for an audio drama because certain visuals you'd have to like have the characters say you have to have the right touch of not like saying things like oh i will set this this thing down on the table over here and then walk over to you so that <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean there might be some of that that is necessary but i imagine it takes a lot of practice finding the right balance yeah but i think from that you know radio dramas bad quote unquote radio dramas tend to be too talky in the sense that like they explain like do you see that over there the blue car go chasing down the red you know <laughs> uh-huh. alien um <laughs> but some of that you expect to hear because there's some things you cannot communicate with sound right it's the it's the format essentially. but but there's a lot you can imply plus sound mm-hmm. like put that down dear or like you know clicking and like hands up you know and then that's oh it's a gun and it's a robbery mm-hmm. or whatever I guess one of the most f- really famous radio drama uh, is uh, Sorry, Wrong Number, where it's basically just a lady on the phone that over here, like this is back when phone numbers, sometimes you could hear snippets of someone else's okay, conversation because yeah. they were all on lines and, and, you know, way back when. But one lady hears another somehow about a murder that's about to take place and she's trying to contact an operator or someone to try to get help or someone and then suddenly you, you hear like there's... A, a crash she hears okay. a crash she's in her own house and so it's basically a, a, a whole drama that's a phone conversation interesting yeah i'm not uber fond of it because like it has a kind of a an empty denouement i think oh. but but after i was like what's, what's the point of that but i mean I, I i know it's like one of these things where like because it, the medium and the message just kind of work together so well, like we talked about last time. That's true, yeah. Um, so you can do that sometimes with an audio drama with having very limited extra sound effects in that case. But it's pretty amazing what you can do. I mean, Doctor Who has done tons of these audio Hundreds dramas. of audio dramas. And it's amazing in some ways because Doctor Who doesn't always go to the most easily translatable <laughs> settings. Sure. The good ones have a really good combination of interesting sounds and dialogue. Some of them I've listened to, sometimes you're like, wait, what's going on? You know, yeah. sometimes there's almost too much. But most times they do a really good job. Well, it's probably a little trickier, too, when you're listening to a British one that it's all... Well, that's true. <laughs> all the accents that you're not used to. But, you know, you, when they're so strange enough. But, yeah, they, they do a lot of... It's amazing the amount of... And, you know, Doctor Who is a relatively sound-oriented medium anyways. You got, you know, the Daleks have a very distinct sound. You mm-hmm. know, the dark TARDIS and... The sonic screwdriver yeah. and stuff. So, and I have to say, I think the uh, focus on the family has done tons of radio yeah. drama. Of course, Avengers and Odyssey is is a big deal, but they've also done their own radio theater stuff. And I I think the their adaptations of the Chronicles of Narnia they're very good. Those are our, probably my favorite adaptations they're from f- outside of the books, of course. No, they're they're remarkably well done. Yeah, yeah, like it's. I mean, those are almost akin to audiobook in a in a sense. I mean, they're they're, they're on the le- yeah they're, they're on the border there because they have a lot more narration than your typical audio drama would. Mm-hmm. Which narration is a lot more forgivable in audio drama anyway. Yeah, because you want yeah because there's certain things you cannot establish. Right, but they do a great mix. Again, they know what they're doing with in terms of sound effects, but and also they just have good actors. You know what? That's interesting with sound effects. You know, we're talking about sound effects and story, and I'm not sure. Sound effects alone, well, you could, but in most cases, sound effects cannot tell a story by themselves, mm. but they're very, very good at creating a lot of the... A mindscape for you. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's that's if you really sucked into an audio drama, you're almost not even seeing, since I, I mean, you can be doing other things, but your mind's eye is completely somewhere else. Mm-hmm. It's almost... Like a splinter of the mind's eye. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> um, it's almost the, uh, the closest to uh, a Mindscape version of um, reading without reading. Yeah, it, it, exactly. I yeah, mean, I guess pretty... that's one reason why audiobooks are so popular, because that's... That's a little different, because audiobooks are... Well, not... yeah, it's still just words, usually. But... Yeah. That's interesting, because a book, through words, tries to create a scene, mm-hmm. and basically we're replacing the words with sounds. Some of them, obviously, I mean, not all of them. You still have dialogue stuff, but you're trying. You at least a lot of the setting stuff. You're 
the sounds are embedded with associations. So you pick sounds that most people can recognize. Mm -hmm. You know, the cricket and it's nighttime or the the screeching car wheel and you're on a chase. Or uh -huh. And if you're having some really unusual sound effect, probably you're going to preface it by, with someone saying something like, what are you doing? Or, or that's like, disgusting. Or, yeah. <laughs> or, or it has a, a tone that creates emotions. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we went back in our music podcast, we talked about music creates a... Not, not music doesn't create a setting as much as a like not in the same but in the same way, but a feeling. A, a feeling, uh, yeah, and sound effects more specific mm -hmm. in many ways. Essentially, what you're saying, if you don't mind me. Oh, we've got some. We've got an extra engineer here in the audio booth. <laughs> <laughs> you have to come over to, oh, if you okay. if you want them to hear you. Well, essentially, what you're saying is that in like an audio drama, a sound is a prop. You're not actually trying to be convincing. You're just telling it's a placeholder. So it doesn't need to be convincing, like the cricket sound. Night doesn't actually use actually sound like that. Not most places. You're just no. telling people that this is night. It's a prop. Unlike in a movie where you're actually trying to be convincing with the sounds. Mm -hmm. Music's also a prop. It's just one we are okay with yeah. being in a movie. Or a tool, I guess you yeah. could say. Yeah, exactly. Proper tool. That's I like suppose that like in a play, you know, your your set your scenery is not realistic, it's just Impressionistic. Yeah, yeah. People know enough to kind of go with. This does not look anything like a forest, but we get the idea. It helps us get in the the mindset for it. Yeah. That's a, that's a really good point. So it's shorthand again in many yeah. ways, and it definitely takes a certain set of skills. It's one of those things we've talked about doing, but we're like, wow, that's a that's a big thing to it, try to. It break takes a lot into. of planning. Yeah, 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 a lot more. You planning. need a script to do that. Yeah. It's a cool medium. Well, well, I, I, I think it's still a lot more popular in Britain than it is here. The rise of podcasts has helped. I mean, like, I've not listened to Night Vale, but I know that's a big one. Yeah, well, that's, again, that's kind of a diff very different kind of, uh, it's almost like a storytelling format of its own. Okay. They're like, have you listened to Night Vale? Much? I have not. It's, is is it's, it like an evil version of Lake Will Be Gone? Yeah, basically. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Not a whole lot of the sound effects, but it's, it's uh, they use the limits of their format pretty well. I guess along on kind of the border of the sound effects, music is in between. I just thought laugh tracks. Okay. Which I think are interesting because they create, they tell you how to feel. Mm -hmm. And again, sound effects are there too. And mu well, see, music is there to tell you how to feel. Did you listen to the 99% um, uh, of Visible did a thing about yeah. laugh tracks a while back? That's probably what you're we're, thinking we're, of. Yeah, we're, we're, we're plugging all kinds of other podcasts. Today, guys. <laughs> well, but you should listen mostly to ours. Um, <laughs> but interestingly enough, because there's an enthusiast for anything, but they talked with a guy who's a big enthusiast about laugh tracks and about kind of... Oh, it was really fascinating. Apparently, there was some guy that created... One of the first kind of organic laugh tracks that, like, he played it like an instrument. No, he's the guy who created laugh tracks. Like, it was this box that you played notes and keys and you could get the right laughs. And I think that's how it worked for a long time. Yeah. And laugh tracks have a bad rep now. And some shows probably, I don't really care for the way they do it, like Big Bang Theory. It's like sometimes you see these shows like that one where, like, anything the character says, they expect a laugh out of. And like, mm, it wasn't really that funny. It was a smirk. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, some other shows kind of feel empty if they don't have one. But, mm -hmm. you know, they're not a bad show. It helps simulate the audience experience. So, yeah, I mean, that's, it's not a sound effect, but in some ways watching a show, it kind of is. Yeah. But it's gone out of style. So Yeah. But it, it's, it's a unique factor. There's one other, um, we're, we're sort of bleeding back into the visual Realm, but there's one other uh, audio cue I think you had mentioned earlier on your list there. The uh, audio logo, essentially. Oh, yeah, audio logo, yeah, which is kind of a whole separate thing, but it's like the the sound that tells you, for instance, there's that, I can't, I won't try to imitate the sound, that law and order. You hear it, it's law and order. Yeah. Boom, boom, yeah. or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Advertise use all the time, and they're not so much trying to tell a story to sell brand which is kind of the same thing i guess it's it's similar to what we were saying like star wars sound effects are so distinctive it's it's a it's an audio signature in a sense you hear that you know what they're talking about yeah. or not talking about or you know the, 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 what's being communicated yeah it's a whole it's like a whole realm of ideas that come in with this self-made like the thing. thx logo which yeah. you were talking about earlier You instantly think, cool sound. Yeah, 
Which is important because there's certain people before they listen to our podcast didn't really know that much about sound or didn't necessarily think about sound. But they hear that and then they're like, oh, that's a cool sound. Every, everyone knows that sound. Yeah. I mean, when you hear the the old window sound, you know, <laughs> you have memories of either good or bad depending on how you're... Or old modems. Yeah, old modems. Yeah, exactly. There's a certain sound that create a sense of, of product. Mm-hmm. You know, this identity. is... Identity. Yeah. Which is interesting. And I bet companies spend a lot of money trying to figure that that kind of thing out. I, yeah, I watch a little YouTube video on audio people listening to some famous sounds and kind of dissecting them. And it's sort of like music and, in a sense, though. It, I yeah, mean, it means it's more music because it's same, similar sort of like deep connections to I don't know. I, I'm sure there's some sort of science behind frequencies and how that all affects us. Yeah, but I'm I'm not that scientific. Yeah. <laughs> Audio I enjoy listening to, but I, I can't make. Yes. I mean, I can talk, but. <laughs> Before we wrap up here, any famous, we mentioned Star Wars and such things. Um, Lost has some pretty distinctive oh, sounds. Man, yeah, the. <laughs> the clicking. The clicking, which was a taxi ticker, I think. Okay. Said. Of the smoke of The smoke of monster. Smoke monster. Um. Well, that's actually really clever, because that's a very familiar sound to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't recognize it, it'll still resonate with you on some level. When I, and I think one of the one of the um, castaways recognized the sound. And they're like, "That sounds familiar." I think they live oh, in the big city. Okay. Yeah. Just to kind of touch base on that. That's kind of yeah. cool. The opening logo was not. They didn't have a theme song. They had a theme sound. It, it, it would put you. It was an unsettled sound. Mm -hmm. Or the uh, the sound mm -hmm. of the every cliffhanger. <laughs> well, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the cliffhanger or the the hatch, which, yeah. which yeah. when in the we, weekly hijack we use, in the season two we use this the the whirling of the click that was kind of our uh, yeah well I think the little, I between. think the beeping sound is a uh, I think we mentioned this before a grocery scanner oh is it really I think so I think I heard of that somewhere that like the, it would beep every time you scan something that's so that's so interesting but because they just use it for the beep of the I wonder though they they must have tweaked the sound oh, of that I imagine that, because you can do all kinds of things adjusting frequencies to make it sound slightly different but it seems like a lot of big idea shows have these interesting sounds again sometimes you don't notice them i'm sure i could go to any movie and be like oh that sound now yeah but yeah i could have entered con you know public consciousness in the same way right probably not it almost has to be some of the for you to really pay attention to it it almost seems like it has to be some sort of sci-fi fantasy sort of thing because like, that adds otherworldliness to like it. if we would go and do pick sound effects and play them most people go oh that's the Door St shutting on the Enterprise, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, Star Trek has a lot of Star Trek. Yeah, I was gonna say has some pretty distinctive science fiction sounds. fantasy have to make sounds so mm -hmm. people notice them more. I think about the only like say superhero sound though I, I would probably identify would be like maybe Spider Man's web 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 slinging maybe maybe some of the Iron Man like blastings Iron Man blasting. Well, sounds. you know, a lot of the sounds are just like shield and mantium hitting things or the claw. Mm -hmm. You know, but they're they're normal ish sound. Yeah, they don't I don't know that they try to make a distinct I suppose that thing sound of, of the of like Iron Man's suit coming together that Yeah the click 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 yeah. click click. Yeah. You could probably play that and people might be like, oh I bet that's what it is. Yeah. I, I bet that's probably true. But I couldn't tell you like a, a diehard sound effect or no. uh or glass and feed Air, or Air Force One and yeah Air Force I mean, most of those are just, just real sound life. effects. The sound effects. They're just normal so. life. They haven't had to create something. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the more the more speculative works tend to have it helps again identify this is this world. Kinda. You know, I bet if we would pick some sound from say, you know, Incredibles two, some people would be like, Oh, that's well, maybe. You know, maybe not, I don't know. Well, the only ones I could like that come to mind right away are like maybe Violet's force fields. I don't know if Jack Jack's eyeball laser. I don't know. I've only sound. seen it the one time, so I, it's yeah, a little I early to, to say. But, I mean not that not that they're in a public consciousness, but it'd be interesting to have a test. Will you play these sound effects and see how many people get right? Mm. Yeah, that would be that would be interesting. These sound would be super easy, and it'd probably get harder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, that's that's our talk about sound. So maybe next time you listen to uh, or watch your favorite movie, watch and listen to your favorite movie, or go pick up an audio drama, guys. Oh yeah, definitely check that out. 
again, highly recommend just about any of the audio stuff that Focus on the Family does. Mm -hmm. uh, if you like Doctor Who, Big Finish is the place to go for that stuff. Yeah. And if there's some other audio dramas out there that's uh, or audio podcasts even that uh, you listen to that think are really interesting, let us know. I'd be I'd be curious to expand my horizons. There I usually bit. listen to Darker Projects. They have a various series. Some of those were good. They do a lot of like fan fiction sort of deals, but they had some original stuff. Okay. I enjoyed that. Cool. That was a while ago. I'm glad that there's it's making a comeback in some ways because mm -hmm. I used to be really big into like old time audio drama stuff and it was it's pretty cool, but to, it just it wasn't being done modernly yeah. by very many people for a long time. I've heard, I've only listened to an episode two, but Second Shift is a science fiction one that back in the day was real popular. It's pretty old now. Okay. But is that another podcast? That's or? a that's a it was an audio drama. Okay. It was a, I mean, I mean on uh, iTunes, but I think some college kids made it. But it was it was pretty good. the first episode was pretty good. Cool. You know, one thing we never even talked about What's that? The, that weird experimental format they talked about on ninety nine percent invisible again. That like it was like stream of conscious radio. Oh yeah, basically. Was, I don't, I don't know how, quite how else how to describe it. That whole episode was like trippy audio. What's the name of the episode? We really need to like put a link for people. Three hundred pounds of whipped cream or something like that. Yeah, on ninety nine percent invisible, three hundred pounds of whipped cream or something is a very interesting. Exploration of audio radio advertising. Yeah. So based about advertising, but and some of it talked about traditional stuff about radio, about how basically you can create any sort of form. And like there's a an example, the name of the title episode comes from some commercial where they talk about why would you want to do radio advertising? And basically their example was it's easy for us to bring to make a giant pile of ice cream with like three hundred pounds of whipped cream on top. Here, let's bring that in. And they played a sound effect. And like it's much easier to do that, especially in nineteen seventies or sixties or whenever yeah. this was. It's easier to, to to do that than it would be to film such film. a thing. Yeah. <laughs> you you can make anything in the theater of the mind. Yes. Is the idea. But then they went beyond that to kind of like they push a it was a it was very interesting. I don't know if I can repeat it. Yeah, I don't know. It is again stream of consciousness audio form. Think that's the about best, you know, and definitely a product of someone who came out of the seventies. <laughs> <laughs> But we might we might play with some of the uh, the other ways that people are experimenting with the realm of sound online these days in the second half. All right. But in the meantime, it is time for soundtrack. So for our first soundtrack, I thought I'd pick a song from Yoshi's Island. It seems that if you go to Yoshi Island remixes, they all feel compelled to use audio, or the soundtrack, sound effects from the game, especially Mario crying, because Mario, that's the whole thing. That's like every time he cries every, a lot. Now. Well, every time he falls off your back, he cries. You have to go get him, and it's just like it's a very annoying sound effect. And but it's very memorable after you play that game for any amount of time. Kind of like Navi's "Hey, listen." Exactly. I guess. Yeah. Okay. And then and there's some. And it has very unique, you know. Very memorable Yoshi jumping sounds and stuff mm. like that. So a lot of the remixes use that. I had a couple picked. This is a shorter one called Facing Fears, remixed by Insert Rupee. So I hope you enjoy.
And we're back. Fun stuff. I enjoy that. Yes. Well, I hope so. You picked it. You yes. The song. Oh. I, mean. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to come up with something clever to say. <laughs> okay. Well, for our next segment, we're going to bring you a bit of story. We thought it'd be fun since we've been talking audio, sort of try to uh, up our game here a little bit with a bit of story. story. Yeah, we normally have Tim will add some sort of nice intro and exit music, but we're going to try to add some, some legit sound. audio drama ish elements. This is still one of Nick's flash fictions, so it'll be a little bit more audio book than actual audio drama. Yeah, it wasn't made for audio. Right. But uh, hopefully, this isn't too painful to put together in post. Um, <laughs> we'll see how it turns out. No promises. All right. Uh, thanks. What's, what is Good that? vote of confidence. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's more a concern on my, on uh, our performance and my editing than it is in your story. I'm well, sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure your performance will be better than mine. So, <laughs> all okay. right, we'll we'll give it our best. So, uh, so everyone, uh, if you want to hear more audio, just tell me, okay? <laughs> and we'll 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 whip together something. Don't never add. Don't they, don't it, make any promises. Not, you not, can't keep. I'm not going to make any promises. You can cut all that out. Okay. All right, what's the name of the story, Nick? This is called The Duel. The domes shook, the ground quaked, the battered alley walls cracked, the air pressed down upon Corbin Priest. He widened his stance and waited for the blow to pass. Concrete dust billowed into the air, shrouding him from his foe's eyes and veiling his foe from his. He was close. Once again, he was very, very close. Where are you, villain? Corbin wiped his face with the back of his hand, then rechecked his ammo. It would be enough. Show yourself. Let's have done with this. Robert McKinley did not answer. He never did. He was a sly, silent snake. Two months without hearing another man's voice. Fifty-nine nights of cat and mouse, cold trails, red herrings, tasteless food, restless sleep, and sudden bursts of gunfire and adrenaline. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Corbin fired across the courtyard of shattered cobblestones just beyond the alley at an amputated statue that still stood somehow. Nothing moved. Then... Again, the dome above shook, and the world shuddered. His world, this maze of broken buildings and haunted streets, this long-abandoned city of no importance, this battlefield that would destroy a nation and save another... But Corbin no longer cared about treaties and terms of peace. They too lived, Corbin and Robert, and life was hell until one or the other died. My enemy, cried Corbin. I will fight in you. Do you think that they will save you? Your people are outside and they cannot enter. It is forbidden and it is impossible. We are sealed. This is our world. I am God to you and you are the arch enemy, the rebel from the beginning. What can be shaken will be shaken, but you cannot and will not escape. Will you run? I will follow on your heels. Will you climb? My arms are stronger than yours. Will you hide away in a corner? I will sniff you out. Will you starve and so escape? That would be a blow, a deep blow, but I will win. I will win, and all your people will be ours, and you will be reviled and hated and mocked and finally forgotten. He walked as he spoke, silently, leaving the shelter of the alley, encircling the courtyard, giving it the appearance of attention, his ears and eyes like satellites orbiting the planet, searching everywhere, alert. A rock skittered nearby. He did not fall for that trick. He had learned to feel the earth, to sense the vibration in the broken pavement and glass. He had overcome the boogeyman and the midnight stalker and the whispers on the wind. He could divine that solitary crawling creature he hated from the deadness of all that was beneath the dome. He turned and let loose a barrage of bullets. 
They sprayed through the open window of a buildingless wall. He waited, felt nothing, continued his slow, steady pace, entering now a wide avenue. The dome shook a third time, a tremendous blow that rattled his bones. Corbin stopped and peered at the opaque surface far above. Wait your turn, he muttered. You sent us. You cannot crack the shell until only one remains. Wait till we are... He moved out of instinct, raising his gun as bullets lanced toward him. They cut through his arm, his hand, but he got it off his own. A grunt of pain. Ugh. He stumbled back, kept his feet beneath him. He breathed heavily and heard its echo nearby. Gotcha, didn't I? Corbin panted. The blighted foe said nothing. Got you fair and square. That's war. Congratulate me and die. The world buzzed. Corbin lowered himself to the ground. Oh, but you bruised my heel. You bruised it good. His shirt soaked up the blood, dripped it. Didn't feel that one go in. Two men breathing, in, out, slowly, in silence, alive and fully aware of everything, of every second, of the grains dropping one by one. They'll do autopsies, Corbin continued. See which one died first. That'll be you. And the war will be over, and we'll write the history books. You understand? You'll be pitiful forever. In print, not even a villain, just the man who lost. And I'll be the hero, the savior. Trembling, Corbin pulled himself to his feet. Across the street, behind a totaled car, his foe lay dying. He had to see him, had to make sure. He checked his weapon, empty. His knife then. He listened and felt and soaked in the world. Something muttered beneath the surface, but his foe remained motionless. Corbin stumbled forward, toppling, and landed heavily on the car hood before working his way around. Robert, bearded, soaked in his own life, stared up at the dome. Corbin knelt. Robert's eyes flickered toward him. This is the end, Corbin whispered, seizing Robert's hand and squeezing it. How he hated the man. The end, the dome rumbled. Deep fissures appeared in its surface, spider frost upon a window. The end of everything. And then, unexpectedly, against the rules, an electronic hiss, a tripping of sound, and a voice, a new voice, as from heaven. Combatants, lay down your weapons. A treaty has been signed. We are at peace. We came as soon as we could. I repeat, we are at peace. Cease hostilities immediately. Corbin trembled. Peace? He was lightheaded. But I won! I won! Peace, whispered Robert, and he died. Well, that was fun. That was fun. I enjoyed that. <laughs> when we, we were getting ready to do an audio drama, I'm trying to pick out which one to, to go with. I wasn't expecting expecting to do a... A, a war novel? <laughs> yeah. As my sisters would say, a man bam. Oh. <laughs> that's that's their ver- the opposite of a uh, chick flick. Chick flick. So, a bonnet movie? Yeah. A man bam. That's what oh, they call interesting. it. So, anyway. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll take it. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, we did. Yes. And I, I feel it appropriate it was very manly because this next segment will probably not be that. <laughs> um, but uh, we're going to go into now. It's came from the interwebs. Okay, it came from the interwebs, where we talk about something... That came from the interwebs. Yeah, that came online. <laughs> and um, you may have put together what we're going for this time if you are if you frequent the YouTubes. This is one part of the podcast I especially encourage you to listen to with headphones. Um, again, if, if, you're, if you've been around the interwebs and you kind of put together that uh, we're talking about audio, uh, you may have heard of a little something called ASMR. This stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. And over the last couple of years, it's found a, a community of people on YouTube. I just recently discovered this thing. Yeah. It's very strange to me. I first encountered it through uh, the Fine Bros, their YouTubers react thing. They had them react to this. And I was, I was fascinated by it. Um, basically, autonomous sensory meridian response is a very scientific term. It's called ASMR for short. Basically, it's the idea of 
sound things that give you kind of a tingly, kind of calming sensation. Or uh, I wonder if everyone has ever used this like in a movie to try to like create a mo- mood. Mo- I don't know. I mean, it's like people have said like Bob Ross kind of the painting is like because yeah. it's very soft sort of sounds of like the brush on the canvas and all that kind of stuff. But it, it sounds strange if people aren't familiar with it, but think of it like if you've ever like got a kind of a tingly feeling from someone playing with your hair while you're giving a haircut or, you know, just kind of a soft thing. But anyway, so we'll, we'll play a couple of videos here from YouTube. There's a lot of different types of this, um, but we'll just see what this first one. I put together a little playlist here. These are on our... Uh YouTube channel. If you yes. Like to visit them yourself. Yes. Um, I'll put a link for it in the show notes. We're going to kind of talk over this, which is not really what you're supposed to do with ASMR. I've never actually listened to this in the headphone setting before. It's much better like that. Yeah. It's odd. (laughs) So we have the video right now is just a woman talking into a microphone. And she can kind of tell she's kind of whispering into she'll go lean from she she obviously has two microphones and she'll lean from one side to the other to kind of so you get the stereo effect. There's just something both kind of interesting and, and, and creepy about her whispering into my ear like that. <laughs> I know. Oh, she's tapping some, some sort of jar. So it's either relaxing or spiders coming. So basically, the whole a lot of what they do is they. I, I like the tapping a lot when I yeah. when I've watched these. Um, she there she was tapping on a, a glass jar of sorts. Um, this lady talks a lot about the various things. There are different styles of this. Some people do like no talking where it's just tapping. This this lady kind of likes to describe a little bit of what everything she's kind of playing with. I've I've heard that people just play these things and it'll make them go to sleep and calm them down. Mm-hmm. And I wonder. Here, oh, wait, l- listen to this. So she's uh, she's cupping some beeswax apparently in her hand. And so it's dropping it in one hand to another. Yeah, it's it's interesting because, I mean, in some ways this tapping soft sound thing reminds me of when I was in Brazil when the rain would come on the tin roof, mm-hmm. I mean, which is one of those sounds that you go in sound machines help you fall asleep. And right, the it's like the ambient noise, yeah. white noise is kind of an industry now, but this is kind of a m- uh, like a subsect, like a more. Advanced or or specialized specialized maybe maybe version of it. I mean, it's obviously it's a little more low tech, which is fits in well with YouTube culture too. Yeah, because it's just a woman in front of a camera. Uh, now, how many pe- how many views does this thing have? This particular one, I think it's like eight million or something. See, that's what's fascinating to me. Yeah, like d- d- it's a big community. Now, this one, this particular one, it c- came from that video I talk about, which has a big audience. So, a lot of people who first, like when I first encountered ASMR, this is actually one of the very first videos I watched. So that it got a little bump there, but, but still, but you get one bump from you. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's 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 just interesting that it's it's really a big deal. It's a, there's a whole genre of it. So let's let's jump to another video to kind of to see another example of Tim, this. Tim, I could make my own where I just fidget with the microphone while you don't want me to, <laughs> and you could hear that. Well, but you're not doing it right. <laughs> it's called 
crypto ASMR. Is that like doing dental work? <laughs> so, oh, what are they doing? So this is this is called an ear cleaning video. The device <laughs> is literally like a microphone stand that's got two ears on either side of it. And uh, it's actually the same woman. She's just overlaid the video twice. Uh, it's see without the video, it might be okay. With the video, it's really kind of <laughs> creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Or at least oddly mesmer. I don't know. It's like something I see on like some, some surreal, like Terry Gilliam sort of. This I think this one's fascinating though. We'll stop talking for a little bit so you can listen to okay. it because this, a lot of them, it's the same sound that you're just kind of hearing in stereo. This one's like two different audio signals, one for each ear. face is amazing it, it, it is <laughs> it is oddly mesmerizing though when it's just complete silence like i'm not going to do it now because it's i could fall asleep but <laughs> <laughs> no but it is it is an oddly like it's like a like an audio massage <laughs> uh -huh. i mean somewhat like it's just like i think because in a normal life you don't spend that much time just absorbing sound, you know, things just <laughs> come at you, and we're, right. we're a very loud society. Yeah, I mean, there's always media, there's always something. And I think there's probably something to our brains. Let's say a little more rural, old school times. You just would it just be birds in the morning. Like I just got done camping, and uh -huh. be, you know, you wake up and there's birds, and it's just with a sign kind of a peaceful sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think this imitates it somehow. It's, like, it's almost like a meditation almost. I mean, not really because it's, like, like it's, an, it's an audio spa. Yeah, it's an audio spa because like you don't normally hear like this kind of massaging sorts of sounds no. specifically on your ears. And I, I do have to say, I listened to a few of these one time, but the headphones is, is much... It's the way to do it. Yeah. It's yeah. the only way I would, uh, I would ever do Yeah. That. So if you're not listening to the headphones right now, guys, you probably make no sense. It, it's a very interesting experience. Yeah. I don't know. Are you? We're talking a little bit over this more than you're supposed to. So I don't know if you're getting like like a tingly sensation. Some people do. Some people don't. I don't know. That, some of that I got. I don't want to call it tingly, but it was in that. It was moving that direction. You yeah. Know. And you really have to kind of like go deep into yeah. it. Yeah. Like it's Which almost. It will be hard on the. Yeah. When we're also trying to like talk to people. Let's see what, what our next one here is. So here we have, this is a very much a tapping video. This particular video, this is an hour and a half long. <laughs> see, that's, I, I don't know, that's just very interesting to me, in the fact that, I could, I could see, I could see, you know, listening to this for a little bit, but I don't have a long time. But he, he taps all kinds of objects. That's the other thing, like this slow taps, there'll be long taps, uh, or loud taps, fast taps. He taps wooden objects, he taps plastic objects, he taps foam objects. I feel like Philip Glass would enjoy this. <laughs> Isn't he like that modern composer, like, yeah, probably nice stuff? Okay, you know what kind of reminds me of? This is going to be weird. Have you ever played Riven, the second Mist game? Okay. I mean, walking around, it's this very ambient, like, 
nature and because that game was meant to be very immersive mm-hmm. and very I mean obviously it was much more story oriented than yeah. this is. I but remember it had that sort of vibe. This I, particular thing. I, I didn't play that a lot, but I I remember Foxtrot, the comic strip, joking about that with um Mist. Because, like, like, the mom would likely get on it, and then instead of, like, going exploring, she'd wind up just listening to the to the waves on the boat or something. Yeah, it was... Uh, Miss was particularly good, and Riven, at this sort of... The, just this calm, ambient... And they had some, some music, but... Mm-hmm. This is kind of mysterious. And, you know, it's interesting. This is both calm and a little... I mean, obviously, you're watching the video. It's like some watering can, so it takes some of the mystique. But if you were not, not looking at that... You might be very curious. It, it's very, like, a little mysterious. Uh-huh. It is a little mysterious, especially since the way the guy filmed it. It's, he's in a black room. It's just the mics. It's very simplistic, uh, this particular guy's style. I'm feeling the right mindset. I would just listen to you to try to come up with story ideas. <laughs> of course you would. <laughs> it's probably one of my favorite uses of stereo sound. Mm-hmm. I wonder if has like a like one of the big theater rooms that they just play this and it goes around. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, yeah, like that. I would be interested to see that. Like an IMAX, you know, like. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it's actually pretty clever with video editing too, because obviously the f- focus is sound, but they're inter. Overlaying two different. Hey, if you're not watching, things. he'll show two, two of him, and then like when it gets close to the microphone, it kind of jumbles the screen up and mm-hmm. kind of overlays, so you see. Yeah, this really isn't. I mean, it seems in many cases the video is just because they, it's the easy way to get. But you wouldn't need the video most cases. It's one of those yeah. things you put on YouTube because that's how you get to people. Yeah, and it's, it's YouTube is just such a convenient format. That's why people yeah. will listen to mu- to music on YouTube. Exactly. It's not about the video. It's I suppose some of the talky ones. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Some of the, the whispering stuff. So, okay, let's see. Because I want to spend, spend too much time on this. It's, <laughs> uh, we fall asleep and we end up here mouse, with well. N for days at a time. Yeah, Mr. Whitaker wouldn't approve of that, I don't think. What would he think of all this? <laughs> Maybe interested. Hey. Hi. It's me. Hello. ASMR. <laughs> Talk. Should interrupt. <laughs> I feel Sketch. like I'm in a library. <laughs> I know. Sketch notebook. Sketch book. Sketch paper thing. So, the, the talky ones are a little more freaky. <laughs> well, I mean, I get them. I, but it, they're, it, it's a different style. They're, they definitely have different styles than some of these different artists. Some are not very talky at all. Some of them are a little bit more. Well, it's one of those things that, like, on one hand, you're like, oh, it's soft. And the other one is like, She's like whispering to me as I'm. It's just <laughs> you're feeling a little awkward. As it's a, like, well, thank hi. How are, should I respond? It's like it's like those cartoons where like, where where swiper? And you're like, <laughs> am I supposed to answer or not? Dora, do, can uh, you find him without me? No, I think like she, I know, I think very purposely tries to do kind of an immersive experience. So see, in this one, she's like, that is, she's like sketching you. See, uh, yeah, that's. See, I don't know what I feel about that. Like, she just stared at me. <laughs> it's like major fourth wall. It's like, if I wouldn't come listen to, like, ear massage, uh-huh. I think I'd rather have the... You'd rather have the, like, the ear massage. Ear, <laughs> ear stuff, yeah. Not, like, I, I remember when I was looking at it, there was some person, like, it was like, cut your hair. And mm-hmm. it a, it, I mean, for some people, it adds to the experience, but it diff- I think there's definitely a matter of taste. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll be honest, too. This is the Internet, so I think that there's probably a, a certain matter of, uh, like, fantasy fulfillment mm. in, in some of these. No, yeah. Cause like, Dude, my question is, of these more immersive how many of them are done by guys? Um, most of them are girls, but it's funny you ask that, because while I was watching this one earlier, it did recommend this other, like, sketching one, and, oh, boy. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just play. <laughs> <You're> just <laughs> <laughs> I ruined the mood. 
So this, okay, apparently the name of this channel is Fred's Voice. Hello, Fred Millish. Hello. Come through, come through. Make yourself <laughs> comfortable. <laughs> How you feel? Okay, awesome. all I can think of watching this guy is just like, as if they got um, Chris Helmsworth as Thor. Exactly! <laughs> That's why I was like... <laughs> Like, so I think this is why some people watch this. Like it's Thor talking to me. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's really great to meet you. And um, thank you for making the appointment. Um, you said you had a look at some of my portrait. He looks like he's like going to laugh half the time. Portraits which I've sketched recently. <laughs> like um, I know he's trying. I know he's being very like kind. <laughs> it's like it feels like a fangirl's like, oh, I want Thor to talk to <laughs> me know. like this. See, this is where it gets creepy. <laughs> this is like, <laughs> yeah, it's like I can't, <laughs> I can't, th I can't take this serious. <laughs> and be, I, I, I'm really amazed, actually, so many people that they can do the whole thing without like just um, like I, I was trying to make an ASMR video. I probably just break down <laughs> laugh in the middle of it. I don't think uh, I have the aptitude to. And I was trying to decide if we wanted to try to bring this into the realm of storytelling or if you even should. It's much more of a sensory sort of thing. Yeah. There are people that do role-playing kind of things. Like this guy, I went into my channel, I was like, he has to. At some point, he has to know, right? Yeah. And yeah, he does. He totally does a Thor role, does it, like okay. in, in a costume and everything. And he's like, how did you get into the throne room? What are you doing? You're from Earth. Oh. <laughs> you know, back in the day... Um, Legolas could have done one of these oh, and made like yes. millions of dollars on this. Oh, totally. But you know, on the psychological part, of thing, I think most people's interactions with people are probably more um, tense or combative, or it's and so. Th so I think I think there really is a psychological need for this sort people. of thing. Yeah, for if you don't have you know some close person can. Say, it's okay, and it's not, you know, it's mm -hmm. like the other lady was talking very, and I, maybe this guy, I haven't, I, I can't quite understand him half the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've got the sound, it's not turned up. You know, it's high. also trying to, you know, go into that weird realm of like, incur, you know, like, encourage, yeah, self, self esteem. Almost. The, there, there are some of them that are very much like everything's going to be okay, kind of, kind of stuff. And, and it's, it's very much like, it's like, um, anti anxiety medicine yes. in some ways. I mean, and, it's it's a little strange, and it hopefully people are finding actual real relationships, not just kind of the simulated kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I I totally understand where some of it comes from. Oh yeah, yeah. So we'll go back to because that one's weird. We'll just go back <laughs> to one last sort of normal one to sort of end this out. And it's like, so again, here this is a non-talking one. It's really just a close up on the hand, so you don't feel like you're up, all up in someone's face, <laughs> or someone's all up in your face. See, like. I could completely see like it's been a long day and just put the headphones on and throw on some. I, I could I could understand that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would do it, but I can I can completely see. Oh yeah, that's same reason people put on you know classical music or mm -hmm. NPR. <laughs> it just it I feel like NPR invented this. <laughs> that was Bach. And now for the soothing sounds of someone running their fingernails over a bunch it of would, rhinestones. It would fit. It would fit perfect. I, yes. I think our next episode, Tim, we should be like, "Hello, everyone. How are you? You're wonderful today. We would like to uh, invite you into the podcast with us, and you could. Oh, it's starting to rain, and I don't know. I'm yes. sure. I'm sure we could do one. We could just kind of stroke the, the microphone just like this. And we could lead you in to a soft area. We could be coming live from an abandoned... Soft sounds of sleep. Yes. And our soundtrack could be Not Maze Dude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not Maze Dude. Actually, not go along no, with actually there's one, I think, read the sign. You could, it could almost work. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but anyways. Yes. A very interesting... Interesting realm, yeah. isn't it? Realm. I think, and the fact that it's a realm, I think, is the thing that's most strange to me. Like, the fact that it exists makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's the, like, a culture yeah. is a little odd. We, we, I mean, I've just, we just scratched the surface here. I'm, I've, yeah, I've I'm sure there's like all kinds. I've three different channels, uh, or six different channels here. And, so I mean, do you it's, have it's a, a favorite one? Do you, I mean, do you, do you listen to... 
I myself I've, routinely. I've, I'd say maybe once, probably about once a week. These since I started into it, um, I I do like the ASMR darling, the the girl one. Was it the first one? Not the first one. Not the, the first one. The one that uh, was sketching. Okay. Um, I I like a little bit of that. Again, some of the role play stuff she does, I don't do all that. Yeah. I've actually fallen asleep to this particular video. A See, this times. is this is very much white noise sort of. Mm-hmm. That make the white noise stuff makes more. Uh, yeah. I get not more sense, but it's a lower threshold. Yeah. Yeah. The I guess. The, the role playing I feel is like a, a whole other realm, and like the tapping, like you said, the tapping's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I like the tapping. I like some some of the hair stuff is kind of because I always like used to like having my mom play with my hair when I was a little kid. Um, I don't think anyone ever played with my hair. <laughs> well, you have to get Natasha to work on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, yeah, we talked about this not being the manly part of the um, podcast. That was the bit <laughs> of story. <laughs> no, this is this is the, the this is the touchy feely kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, things I don't care nearly as much about. Some people, there's uh, I've seen like uh, the mouth noises, spe- specifically like clicks and. Sh- I yeah. like doing them myself. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't, I, the hearing it in my in my in my ears. I'm not I'm not all about that. That's it's a little stranger for me. And but, some of it, and some of it, I think some of these sound ones are just like. Who have never heard that sound that close? Yeah, I mean sometimes like it's very cool. Like, it's like it's like almost like exploring. Yeah, and it's funny how much if you ever see me like tapping things in real life, I, I'm sort of like, I wonder what that taps like. Because you can tap anything. Yeah. Um, but it's sort of like or like putting the here. The, she's still playing with cups, but sometimes they they'll do it where you put the cup over the microphone, and it's like that cool sound of like putting the cup over your ear, or like a seashell that kind of thing. So it's, it's it's almost like a kid sort of when you would just use exper you know you experiment with the world when you know you touch things in like mm-hmm. sometimes our lives are so busy we don't do that as we get grown up yeah but I mean like it's kind of a pause like hey that sounds kind of cool yeah um, just like it's like you know kids books have the here's a soft you know yeah. is this my kitten no uh, and is this in this rough tongue and I've always been kind of sensitive to like. My mom knows this. She'll torture me sometimes when she's getting like a package out and it's got that really screechy styrofoam and stuff. <laughs> I'm one of these people that like I just tense up like a cat when I, <laughs> if if a, if a certain frequency hits me the yeah. wrong way. It's like no stop. Do, Don't do, do they that. do they have like anti ASMR videos like chalkboard screeches? It's and stuff? possible. There. No, some... I don't want to listen to it. Yeah, I've, I've never looked for it because <laughs> like that's just evil. But I would not be at all surprised because they do weird things like that on online. All right. Well, I okay. think we should tear ourselves away yeah. from this okay. for now. So we'll be sucked into ASMR for a while. But <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of Derailed Trains of Thought, our 90th episode. Do do do. So it's it's been fun. Looking forward to 90 more. <laughs> sure. I don't know how long we have into this, but I know uh, we we've got we've got some we, we've got some stuff tanks, planned. So. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we do. And if you ever have requests for a story idea or. Well, story idea, you can have Nick write Well, it. that's true. <laughs> yeah, seriously. You know, send me something, I'll, I'll write you a story. But, um, you no. Know, topic ideas. Topic for us. ideas, thank you. We're always taking them. We uh, we may have uh, our own ideas in plan, but we uh, will definitely put it on the list. Put it on the list. We and have it a, might take 50 episodes to get to. But, but <laughs> sometimes we have things on our list that have been there for probably too long that we're like, at this point, we're like, maybe we should just drop that. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently we th- we don't have the resources or the interest or both sometimes. yeah or something or the knowledge I mean sometimes they're just we don't have the right person to talk to yeah yeah so come talk to us <laughs> but it's been fun ninety episodes episode one hundred is now within reach it is so we will have to see if the pot where the podcast might take us for that it should be interesting it will probably be interesting in the meantime for our anniversary gift give us a rating on iTunes or the of your podcasts catcher of choice or just tell your friends that it works you know almost the best way to spread the podcast at mm-hmm. this point i uh, know we've got like a couple reviews or, or we have a couple ratings on uh apple Podcasts, which i guess is what you're supposed to call it now not itunes <sighs> <laughs> and then um join us on twitter I'm trying to keep that up with interesting links and questions and stuff yeah i need to i need to work on that again I'm yeah a little behind we're in and out on it but we're, we're steady we're steady we're there we exist talk to us <laughs> we'll ask questions exactly and, of course, listen to uh, The Weekly Hijack, Going Through Babylon 5, available now on Amazon Prime. So we've got all kinds of things out there for you to do to get involved with your old trains of thought. Yes. Don't just be a lurker like we usually are. In um, Brown Sector. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> if you listen Tim. to the Weekly Hijack, you might know what that meant. Yes. What it was, Tim, you have a soundtrack? I do have a soundtrack. It is now an hour and a half of tapping. <laughs> yes. No. Uh, although it is hopefully very nice and relaxing, kind of like the ASMR discussion was. This remix is called Tropical Relaxation Method, so very relaxing, and we've been on this very audio relaxing theme. It's a remix from a couple songs from Mega Man X3 and Mega Man X4, done by... Very relaxing game. Timaeus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not exactly relaxing, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, it works because it's not just about the ambient sound here, but they also have some sound effects. Oh, nice. Which, and Tropical has a very distinctive kind of sound to it. Mm -hmm. So I thought, hey, this all ties in really, really nicely here. But anyway, the remixer is uh, Timaeus222, which I think is kind of a cool screen name. And I hope you enjoy it. Um, so until next time, uh, I have to go show Nick around uh, the yeah, Bible well, room. I want to get some ice cream. Oh, yeah, you, you want some you ice took, cream? You offered me something, and then we had to start podcasting. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like a good time. Okay. Sounds good. So thanks for joining us. Till next time, this is Tim. This is Nick. Bye-bye. <laughs>